Hi friends, thanks for tuning in. My name is Jess. I'm a therapist and a former scapegoat from a narcissistic family. And in this video I'm going to talk about why the scapegoat needs to expect the worst. So if you've got a few more minutes in your day, stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Hi friends, scapegoats, allies, people with narcissistic parents, maybe you've got some golden children out there. For those of us who've grown up around narcissistic people, we often realize that we have a, a thought pattern where we tend to focus on the worst outcome. <clears throat> so this may not be a surprise. You might be like, yeah, Jess, I know, I get it. So let's talk about it just for a couple of minutes and stay with me because there is a really, really sinister undertone to all this. And I think it's very important even if we know that this is how we think, it's really important to consider this last piece and what it means for ourselves and our lives. So for a lot of us, it's not a surprise that we know we are looking for, <clears throat> we kind of look for trouble. We look for the worst possible outcomes. There's a couple of reasons for this. So the first one is that when we're around narcissistic people, they're very inconsistent. They can be volatile, they can change their minds, they can be unpredictable, they can just be full on confusing. Or all of the above. It's really hard to be around. And even if a narcissist or a narcissistic parent isn't being physically abusive or threatening, this can be very psychologically difficult and it would come under emotional abuse when we're really confused all the time and we can't settle. So we become very good at reading the room. We become very sensitive to other people's moods, their body language. We, we start to anticipate situations which we know are difficult for these people in our lives. And so we really start to run our lives in a way where we are trying to look for trouble, not really for ourselves, but we're trying to look the situations that we think that someone else is going to react to, that we think the, the, the narcissist is going to react to, and then that's going to cause trouble for us. And it's really a losing game because, like I said, the narcissist is so unpredictable and they're, they're incredibly hypersensitive. And so we just never know when they're going to lose it. So we're kind of playing this losing game where we're trying to anticipate things that, first of all, we can't anticipate. And then we are trying to predict how an unpredictable person is going to react to these unknown triggers or situations. It's exhausting. And also it's what keeps us safe as kids because we have to try and minimize and look for the root through that has the least amount of conflict. So that's the first reason why we look for trouble. The second reason though, which is where I think it starts getting really nasty. So for those of us who experienced the more malignant, the more vindictive type of narcissism, we learned that if there's something that we really wanted, something that we cared about, something that was important to us, then that was a threat. We could lose it. The narcissist could take that away from us. I realize I just have to take a pause on that and, and just how, how, even though I'm so used to that, just how heartbreaking that is. Because what it means is that we have to, we can't show what we love. We can't 
share our hopes and our dreams because the narcissists cannot abide. They, they, they are so threatened by other people's happiness. They don't like want to see our joy or our success, even if it's just a little thing. They are not able to support and get that secondary joy. If someone else is happy, then they can join in and be happy for them. That is just not how a narcissist works. Anybody else's positivity is a threat to them because they are so broken inside. And so what that means that we learn to do as young people, as kids, and if we don't change it, we bring this into adulthood, is we learn that we can't, it's unsafe for us to follow our dreams and our goals. And because we are so worried that they might sabotage or they will interfere or they will somehow turn something that we hold really deep in our hearts as something beautiful or good they will deliberately not all but but some of these people will deliberately take those things and and destroy them because it's a threat to them and there is just no, there are, there are no words really for just how deep, how deeply sad and that it's not even that, it's just, this is one of the, those horrendous things about narcissism that it's just so, so soul destroying that the narcissist can't see the pain and the misery that that causes and it is just so unnecessary and ultimately it's so twisted and it's wrong our narcissistic parents on one hand want us to be successful so they can show us off to the world and, and revel in what great parents they are and at the same time that success has to be held and muted and, and controlled by them and it can't go too far because they just, it's a threat to them and they just can't, they can't be happy for other people's happiness. And so I think what I wanted to get across from this message is not to dwell in the misery, <laughs> believe it or not. I wanted to bring to to our awareness if we're not if we're used to thinking well I'd rather think about the bad sides because it keeps me safe I don't want to be disappointed and 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 then I can't you know I I don't I don't if I'm if I'm really up here then I don't have to experience that fall but the problem with that my friends is that we end up cutting out Basically, we cut out the joy in our lives because we are so worried about that heartbreak and that 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 loss, that loss and, and that grief around losing something that we care about so much that we effectively we we cut off the joy and the 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 light and the happiness in our own lives. And when we do that, we end up. I always think of it as kind of like a, a line and then uh, yeah, above the line we have the positive things and below the line we have we have the negative things and and life is is an up and down right we we naturally we have we have good things and we have bad things it can happen you know even through a day we can have high points on our day we can have low points on our day weeks months years that is what life is it's this ebb and flow and the way we get through life is that we try and, or the way we we get through life without being desperately sad and depressed and, and, and unhappy and anxious, is that we appreciate the good moments because that gives us some time and some relief and allows us to kind of fill our cup for, for when we have bad times and then we've got some resources. The problem is when we're always in the bad times, we don't have that relief and we just become so accustomed to the darkness. And then 
our bodies change, our minds change, and we end up spiraling in the down place. And at some point, we almost forget how to be happy. And that leads to a lot of it, it leads to a lot of mental health problems, it leads to physical problems, and obviously it, it means that we're losing one of the points of being alive, which is some joy. So friends, I think if I have a message, I like to have a message in my videos, don't I? My message is that and I, I, because I, it's for me as well, often it's for me, it's that, that reminder that I know like the experience of losing something that we love or not getting the thing that we love or things going wrong is hard. But it doesn't outweigh the fact that there are a lot of good things in, in our world and it's really important that we allow ourselves to, to or we try and retrain ourselves to look for those positives and to experience that joy because that is what life is about and ultimately we can handle the ups and the downs and guys if nothing else we don't want the narcissists to win we don't want their darkness and their oppression to follow us through even when they're not around anymore Friends, thanks so much for being here. If you're still here and you <clears throat> are struggling with anything, if you feel like you could do with a little bit more support than this, these videos allow, please check out my website. You can drop me a line. We can, we can do a bit of one-on-one -on -one coaching and we can maybe figure out some ways to help you through some of these difficulties. It's a tough one to deal with, but through the work that I've done and my own experiences, I know that life does get a lot better and we can survive and thrive and move on and find joy. Please take care. Drop me a line below, like, subscribe, all the things. I will see you soon. Bye for now.